Insert the scope tip with the bending section supported by the forefinger. Then the endoscopist removes the second glove that's already in position. Passing into the rectum, there's a red out. Insufflate, angulate and twist to find the lumen. Use single-handed steering technique, the right hand twisting or torquing the shaft. Occasionally, during insertion, when it's clean, the scope can be fixed by leaning on it. The shaft is held in the fingers using a gauze for hygiene and to apply torque. Fist grip is more clumsy and loses the feel and the delicacy of finger grip. The left hand manages the angulation controls and valves. The thumb angulates the bending section, resting against the up-down control ready for action. The thumb can also reach across to the lateral control, at least for small movements. Use the two smallest fingers to grip the control body, so while the thumb is comfortably in action, the forefinger only is kept for the air water or suction valves, leaving the middle finger free to be used as a helper to the thumb as it angulates the bending section and tip. When the tip is angled up, twisting the shaft of the scope anticlockwise will steer the tip towards the left, whereas if the tip is angulated down, twisting anticlockwise steers it to the right. This is the basis of torque steering, the simplest and best way of managing the colonoscope. Because the shaft and bending section are torque stable, angulating up always moves the view upwards toward the top of the monitor. In close-up, when only the vessel pattern is visible, angulating up over the surface, the vessel pattern moves down. If the scope tip angles up, Twisting gently clockwise will move the tip to the right and the vessel pattern slides past the lens to the left. In close-up, angulating up or down, react to the monitor view, talking gently clockwise or anticlockwise as necessary, so the scope follows the lumen direction. Torque steering requires coordination between right-hand torque and left-hand angulation, so as not to lose the view. The rectum, which is capacious enough, is a good place to practice talking. It's possible to twist 360 degrees around, though this does mean hard work for both hands. Note the axis of a bend, and talk up or down to make angulation and passage around easier. Targeting a polyp, for instance, it's important to get it into the bottom of the view, close to the instrumentation channel. Shaft torque results in accurate targeting, which makes biopsy, snaring, coagulation or suction easy. The lumen view can be lost. Looking for small visual clues will find it again. The centre of converging folds should be the lumen. The darkest side of the mucosal view should be nearest to the centre. And the darkest part of a fluid-filled colon should be where the lumen centre is. Close-up steering is also helped by looking for curved arcs. Arcs may be caused by haustral folds, by reflections from the circular muscle fibres under the surface, or by highlights reflected off the surface, even by the microscopic innominate grooves when you can see them. In large colons, a useful clue can also be one of the three longitudinal muscle bundles, or tinii coli. When the view is lost for more than a few seconds, there's a three-point action plan. Inflate, pull back to disimpact the tip, and the vessel pattern slips away in the direction of the lumen. Don't move the angulation controls around at the same time, which usually makes things worse and disorients completely. Avoid thrashing around with purposeless movements, and in particular, avoid redouts. Don't ever push with a redout like this. Even a limited view may show the way. Here, it's following the longitudinal muscle bulge up and under the transverse fold. Then, 
push through for a few centimeters or a few seconds is permissible until the view is regained. Colonoscope angulation depends on the tip being free and having space to move. If it's fixed, as by adhesions for instance, then the shaft moves but the tip doesn't move at all. This is the problem in diverticular disease, especially where pericolic adhesions hold the tip and stop the endoscopist manoeuvring. A perfect view isn't necessary. Use a minimal amount of air insufflation, sufficient to see the lumen. Steer over the top of any fluid pools, insufflating just enough air to create a space and pass through. Sometimes, if there are difficulties and an adequate view isn't being obtained, it's quicker to change position. Onto the back is often effective, but sometimes it's better to get the patient onto the right side. Passing through the tortuosity and folds of the colon, also think of pulling back from time to time whenever the scope is angulated, so hooked and able to grip the colon. Pullback often smooths out the bend, crumpling and shortening the colon behind and straightening it ahead. When the scope is really straight, the shaft feels free with one-to-one -one insertion and easy torque steering. Every radiologist knows that left lateral x-rays show fluid-filled distal colon, whereas position change to right lateral opens up the distal colon and smooths out some bends. Similarly, for the endoscopist, acute bends and angulations in the sigmoid or splenic flexure can often be made easier by changing from left lateral to supine or right lateral, letting the pull of gravity smooth things out and air rise to improve the view. Trying to pass acute bends, over angulation of the bending section should be avoided. The view ahead may be good, but the walking stick handle shape impacts in the bend. Pulling back, then deangling, even if the view is worsened a little, lets the scope slide around because there's less friction. Pushing in a flexible scope it's inevitable that the shaft tends to flex and loop. A loop is being formed whenever the tip doesn't advance as far as the shaft is pushed in, loss of one-to-one -one relationship, often with a feeling of resistance and wind pain experienced by the patient. If a big loop has formed, paradoxical movement may result in the tip initially sliding back when the scope is pushed in. Simply pulling out will always reduce the loop. But choosing to pull back when the tip is angulated, around a fold or bend, gives a better hold, making it less likely that the scope will slip out. The scope tends to push a conventional sigmoid into a clockwise loop. So twisting clockwise during withdrawal is most likely to help straighten things out again. Anticlockwise torque usually worsens the loop. So, when talking clockwise to avoid relooping, don't talk steer anticlockwise and so reloop. Use the angulation controls to steer instead. If a bend or loop is causing problems and simple pullback doesn't free things up, the following four basic actions resolve most situations. Firstly, try pushing through gently in the direction of the lumen, providing the patient gets little or no pain and the mucosal surface slides by. If there's no advance or if pushing hurts the patient, pull back with clockwise twist. Then push in again with clockwise twist to try to advance. If that doesn't work, try pulling back with anti-clockwise twist. If that fails too, change patient position and run through the four actions again. Talk steer in slowly. Every movement controlled and intentional. That's quality colonoscopy.